Uh, looking at the vol side of things, crypto realized vol has been pretty stable. So even though we've been breaking higher, it's not been too violently. So we're still looking at about a 30 to 40 realized. Um, implied vols have exploded somewhat, though, in anticipation of, of the election move. So we have got front end, obviously, um, trading quite a bit higher than, than implied. So you've got about 20 vol points of carry uh, in the front of the curve, which is, which is chunky. Um, that's not likely to remain. The implied move right now is looking at roughly 7% for the election. Um, carry, obviously isn't going to stay this high for long. So we will see a vol reset after the election. Um, and you'd expect a, a pretty, pretty brutal 10 plus vol point move um, in the front end. Um, these uh, OHLC charts kind of show Ethereum pretty well contained within the implied moves. Um, actually did test a couple of them to the downside, uh, but bouncing. And then Bitcoin, on the other hand, touching the upper end of that boundary as it is kind of starting to break out. Um, Trump obviously seems to be going strong after his recent media appearances, social media, uh, in, that, in that he was on the podcast with Joe Rogan, which has got like over 35 million views on YouTube, which is pretty impressive. It's basically smashing the hell out of all of the old school media. Um, and, you know, he came, off, he came off reasonably well in that interview. Um, there's a debate as to whether Kamala is going to actually meet with Joe Rogan before the election or not. Um, I think it would serve her well if she did, like to show some sort of ability to have a conversation and be be real and be a normal person um, and not just a politician. Uh, but whether she manages it to do that or not remains to be seen. Okay. Um, anyway, I won't speculate any more on that. Now, looking at the term structure, we can see these, these kinks are still in here. Obviously, the forward vol is about a 20 vol premium to where where the, this week's volatility is. And that 20 vol point premium does equate to roughly a 7% move, according to my calculations, for the election. You can see the 10 vol point jump here is in the 8th of uh, November. That's the one that has moved this week, effectively not allowing it to decay. So, you know, they're not, not letting those straddles decay because they contain the event. Um, and then in the back end, you can see vol drifting slightly, nothing too dramatic. But even the end of November and December options are better bid in Bitcoin, uh, and they are catching more of a bid than, say, the same options in Ethereum. So I thought that was a little bit interesting. Usual um, charts here for time series on vols and skews. Um, so we did see, obviously, um, these moves, these kind of cyclical moves. Um, into the weekend that we often see um, of Vol kind of drifting lower. But as Spot has been breaking higher, Vol has caught a bid. Uh, and, and you can see that front end has kind of caught up all the way back to the back end there, um, which, you know, obviously makes sense going into an event. Skew wise, uh, we did have a little dip. We got down to like minus five Vols in Ethereum short dated weekly skew. That has recovered all the way back to about zero. And looking at Bitcoin, we were at sort of minus two, and that's recovered back to um, slightly positive as well. So short dated skew doing its usual, winging around with spot um, and has caught back into cool uh, premium. Looking at the skew term structure. So it's a little it's little change from where it was last week, apart from the 8th of November calls have kind of lost a little bit of their cool premium. Uh, they are dipping down as the move seems to be somewhat getting priced in as we break higher. So then th there's less need for the 8th of November expiry to contain as much call premium if we already got the rally. That's kind of the logic there. Um, long dated call skew is also stable at around four vols um, and, and providing and, and, you know, con continuing to suggest a medium term bullish outlook into next year. Um, obviously, the inflows that we've been getting in ETFs, the liquidations on futures are all fueling this rally. But the upside bid is pretty tame, right? We're not seeing like 10 vol upside um, premium for calls because people aren't the way people are expressing this rally is not piling into upside calls and really moving that vol. It seems like there's more higher conviction buying of actual spot exposure or futures exposure than buying speculative call options, right? So I would take the lack, you know, I would take the lack of call bid as actually quite bullish because 
it means people are comfortable just owning spot, basically, right? They're not like saying, oh, this thing might collapse after the election, so I'm going to buy calls and just have premium at risk. In fact, they're saying, no, we've been waiting for the election to be the driver. We're starting to see confirmation of the break higher, and let's just own spot now between now and the end of the year. So there's not as much reason for them to buy calls. And if anything, they might even be willing to sell some calls after the break as a bit of an overwrite type trade. So that's kind of how it looks like the market is responding to this, this latest kind of catalyst, right? Um, we mentioned ETH Bitcoin spread lurching lower down to 0 0.036, showing little sign of bouncing as BTC driving the strength into the election. Ethereum Vol did lose some ground in the shorter dated expiries as Bitcoin call buyers and Bitcoin generally Vol interest was a bit better, uh, chasing the break higher. And ETH not really giving traders anything to get overly excited about. Um, I would probably wait for the election outcome to play out bef before considering any meaningful longs in ETH if I wanted to play some sort of catch up. But to be honest, ETH's not where, where the story's at by the looks of it. And Solana's outperforming ETH quite considerably as well. Um, so I, I'm not sure... I'm not convinced I'm going to be chasing ETH. I, I did, I'll did. i show you what trade I put on an ETH, which is kind of a low conviction way to own some upside in ETH uh, in a minute. Uh, and then relative value term structure on the SKU has kind of continued to show the same pattern where ETH has got less demand for short dated upside, which is why we've got a negative two here. So, so whilst we've got pretty neutral SKU in ETH, we've got a slight call premium in Bitcoin. So that's why we've got a negative two here. But as we go to the back end, say June 25, we've got slightly more call premium than we have in Bitcoin. So ETH has got more call premium in the back to June 25 and September 25. It's got less call premium in the front. Um, and in the middle, it's kind of in line, right? With the kind of Jan, March expiries. Hi, everyone. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Remember, this is just a little taster of what we do at Options Insight. To get access to all our research, including my in-depth vol market insights, flows and positioning report, and my portfolio trades, and a whole lot more, you can sign up for a free one-month trial at options-insight.com. I'll see you soon.